are here at Michigan's Adventure. Now I've heard a lot of not so great stuff about this park, but I'm here on a Saturday and we have fast passes. So I'm pretty excited and hopefully we should be able to get on all the park's coasters and maybe it'll surprise me, who knows. Hold on guys, enjoy your ride. You're on Wolverine Wildcat. Well, Shivering Timbers is closed, right now at least, but we just did Wolverine Wildcat. It's a fine wooden coaster. It's not rough or anything, it's just super boring. It did nothing at all. <laughs> oh! Shivering Timbers just opened. A great success! And oh my god, that was incredible. We got the very front row. That had so much airtime. That was ridiculous. We just did corkscrew, and for an old era, that was actually really smooth. It didn't do too much, but that was like surprisingly smooth, wow. After that, we went and rode Mad Mouse, the park's aerodynamics wild mouse coaster that opened in 1999. This was my first ever wild mouse that would be built by aerodynamics, and let me say, it is 100% the best wild mouse I've ever ridden. It was very lightly braked, so you flew through that layout. All of the turns gave really good laterals, and the final drops at the end actually gave some solid airtime, and it was still a super smooth, and the seats were very comfortable, making it a really solid ride. It's a really good family coaster, and it still holds up as a thrill coaster, and it is actually one of my favorites in the park. And after that, we decided to go pick up some credits by heading over to the park's kitty area. We started off on Zack's Zoomer, which luckily did have a line for the fast lane, so I got on immediately. And this was one of my more weird roller coaster experiences. I'm about 6 feet tall, not super huge or anything, and I couldn't fit into the seat sitting regular. I had to pretty much ride sideways with my legs across the seat, so I pretty much got to experience it sideways. It wasn't any crazy coast or anything, but the experience alone made it memorable. And then we went and checked out the park's newest area, Camp Snoopy, which was new for 2021. And even though I know that I'm not this area's target demographic, I actually thought it was pretty awesome. It had really good landscaping, and the rides it did have were all modern and flashy, even though there weren't as many as I would have thought. There are maybe five or six good kitty rides, and the area as a whole looks really nice. Admittedly, I was only there so I could get the Woodstock Express Kitty Coaster credit, which was not a terrible ride, but at the end of the day, it's just a kitty coaster. Great for those younger kids. And this was definitely one of the nicer areas of Michigan's adventure. We just got off of Thunderhawk, the Parks of Tacoma SLC. I'm not one that usually hate on a coaster, but that was pretty terrible. Oh my god, it was so rough. That's gonna wrap up our day here at Michigan's Adventure. You can see our ride count on the day right here, and I actually thought this was a fairly underrated park. It's nothing spectacular, but it definitely isn't bad, and Shivering Timbers alone is a great reason to come up to this park, even though it's very much out of the way. Even though I didn't end up vlogging that much, I ended up thinking that Michigan's Adventure was actually fairly underrated. 
I did end up riding every single one of the park's roller coasters. However, I didn't ride any of their non-coasters. I was gonna try to get on their log flume, however, it was closed the entire day, and none of the other flat rides really stood out to me. They really only have one or two thrilling flat rides, and the rest of them are for families and kids, and that's definitely an area the park should look on fixing in the upcoming years. However, with Cedar Fair's budget that they give to this place, we know that that probably won't happen. Rides aside, I thought that this park actually looked pretty nice. They obviously have that central lake right there in the middle of the park, and it does make the park look very pretty. Also, they do have a lot of trees and shrubbery around the park, so there definitely is no shortage on greenery here. However, the lake does pose one major issue. It makes the park's layout really awkward. And unlike most parks, it doesn't form a full 360 degree loop around the lake. It actually forms a kind of strange horseshoe, with one dead end by Shivering Timbers on the front side of the park, and one dead end back by Thunderhawk and the Rapids Ride on the back side of the park. Now there is a train that will take you from one side to the other in about 5 minutes, however it would be a lot more convenient if they could just install a pathway between both sides of the park. However, that really doesn't change my opinion of the park all that much. For what they have, it's not a bad place at all. The park definitely looks nice, and Shivering Timbers is a fantastic roller coaster. However, aside from that, there isn't too much to draw in thrill seekers in the area. And especially if you're coming from out of town, it's definitely way out of the way from any other theme parks if you're trying to incorporate it on a trip. Nonetheless, this is still a really good park for families and kids, and at the end of the day, it is not a bad amusement park, and I still really enjoyed my visit to Michigan's Adventure. Anyways, that's gonna wrap up this video. I probably will end up having a full in-depth review to Michigan's Adventure sometime down the road, but as of now, those are my thoughts on Michigan's largest amusement park. If you've been here, let me know your thoughts on the place down in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a like rating. Also, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe for content just like this coming your way on Hangtime Thrills every single week. Anyways, I'll catch you guys next time.